Self-harm occurs when people deliberately hurt their bodies. It is often done as a way to cope with painful or overwhelming feelings such as anger, stress, depression or fear. Understanding self-harm can help schools play an important role in supporting children who may be at risk or showing signs of self-harming behaviours. Self-harm is a term used to describe a group of behaviours that people use to deliberately hurt themselves. Some examples are cutting, burning and self-hitting. There's two main reasons why people self-harm. Firstly, it's to cope with overwhelming emotions. And secondly, it's a way to communicate to the self and to others that things are not okay. We know that biologically, what happens when a person self-injures or self-harms is that certain chemicals are released in the brain. These chemicals actually lead the person to feeling more calm. It's a very similar effect to what you might find after you do some exercise or eat some chocolate. This might seem contrary to what one might expect after someone self-harms. Some people have likened self-harm to an addictive behaviour. This is because although initially the self-harm behaviour will make you feel good, nice and calm, it then leads to feelings of shame and other negative emotions, which can lead to another episode of self-harm, which in the end sets up this cycle of self-harm behaviour. It can be really tricky to pick up self-harming behaviour among children because they really try to keep it hidden. They can do this by wearing long sleeves, long pants, bracelets and jewellery to cover up their skin. They might avoid activities like swimming and sports or anything else where their skin might be exposed. There's a difference in self-harm behaviour between primary school children and adolescents. Among primary school children, you're more likely to see scratching, headbanging and hitting, whereas among adolescents, you're more likely to see cutting and burning. We know that self-harm is the most significant risk factor for suicide attempts. So no matter what age or what severity, self-harm needs to be taken seriously and addressed immediately. In terms of occurrence, there's actually not much data about self-harm in primary school aged children. There's very few studies that have researched this. However, one large Australian study conducted in 2010 did find that 7.6% of 10 to 12 year olds had self-harmed at some point in their life. Now, although there was no data about kids younger than 10 years old, we do know that it is happening, although it is very rare. Self-harm is confronting, especially when it's associated with suicide. However, it's really important not to make the assumption that a person who self-harms is attempting suicide. Especially among children, self-harm is usually a way to cope with overwhelming emotions and is not usually a suicide attempt. At the whole school level, it's important that schools provide the opportunity for children to develop their social and emotional skills which gives them healthier ways to cope with difficult situations rather than turning to self-harm behaviours. Schools should also be promoting connectedness and positive relationships between students and peers, staff and families. It's also really important to have clear and consistent management policies and procedures in place when responding to self-harm. Other things to keep in mind are encouraging children to seek support from staff when they're distressed or need help, also, it can be helpful for teachers to have some kind of education about self-harm. It's useful for schools to identify key staff who will be there to respond to children who self-harm. Ideally, these staff will be from the welfare team or it might be the school counsellor. The most important factor to consider when responding to a child who's self-harmed is to be non-judgmental and calm. A useful way to think about this would be to respond as though they'd accidentally hurt themselves. If you don't respond in an overly dramatic way, then you won't reinforce the behaviour. It's also really important that if needed, the wound is seen to. School procedures should be followed. Notify the key staff member that an incident of self-harm has occurred. In turn, the key staff should contact the family, arrange a referral and follow up if needed. 
Another thing to consider is that it may be very confronting to witness an episode of self-harm. So it's a good idea if you have a chat to the school counsellor or welfare team just to debrief. Families are often stressed and overwhelmed by the situation. Schools can be a place where families can feel comfortable seeking information and support. School staff can also support families to work and liaise with other professionals who may be involved. Collaborative and consistent approaches to working with children who self-harm are always more effective. An important part of prevention of self-harm is having a supportive school environment which is focused on building self-esteem and helping children learn how to manage their emotions. The Kids Matter framework supports schools in assisting children who self-harm by promoting positive coping behaviours. Effective emotional coping in childhood helps support children's mental health for life.